What's up you guys? Um, I'm back with another video. Today I'm sort of going to be breaking down Megco and their brands inside of it, as well as talking about a recent purchase I've been wearing a lot that's from their brand Yucatan. Please make sure if you're enjoying the videos to subscribe to them, like them, but without further ado, let's get into Megco. So Megco is an American-based brand founded by two Japanese immigrants, Yuki Matsuda and his wife Megumi, hence the name Megco. Um, they own four brands. That would be Yucatan, Epperson Mountaineering, Manitli, and Chamula. Beginning with Yuki, he's originally from Osaka and he spent a lot of time in his early adult life coming to California for trade shows to sort of find the newest trend to bring back to Japan. And he's actually attributed with bringing the Stan Smith back to Japan and popularizing it there. He was known in the 80s to sell goods at the Rose Bowl and he eventually sort of realized that he really had an affinity for these vintage American-made products but didn't necessarily like the fit of them. So he wanted to implement a sort of innovative heritage to it in order to create a product that fits well. It has a modern cut, but it takes aim from American staples and sort of that sweet spot of Japanese Americana. And so the four brands that he has, three of them were founded by Yuki. Well, the fourth Epperson Mountaineering was actually founded by Mark Epperson. So interestingly enough, with Yuki being from Japan originally, Megco products tend to actually sell more in Japan. There aren't as many stockists in America or even Europe. Um, Japan is the central hub of Megco products. That's where most of them go. But beginning with Chamula, this comes from Yuki's time spent exploring Mexico. It's mainly knitwear and hirachis and other leather good shoes. Um, all of the knitwear is basically made from merino wool from sheep in Mexico, and I believe the leather is also from there, although it could be horween leather, don't quote me on that, but I think that it is leather tanned in Mexico, and it's made by local Mexican craftspeople, and this sort of draws me to the first thing that I really appreciate about the Megco family, and that is Yuki's attention to detail is something that's probably only comparable to a company like Visvim, where he has spent such a long part of his life exploring the, the North American continent and meeting people and learning and really sort of giving different craftspeople an output for their goods so that it, it connects them with places like Japan or other parts of America, Europe, the entire world. In heritage goods, you get an item that's just well made, but there's not an understanding of who is making it, why are they making it? And I really love this connection that everything that Yuki makes comes from his, his raw passion for well-made goods, vintage goods, you know, not forgetting the past, being able to make the past better to improve on it and i think that another brand that speaks so well to that is mon Italy. and that brand is named after his daughter monica and a lot of it comes from garments that yuki came across thrifting shopping vintage he really loved certain garments he'd come across but the fit just wasn't perfect on them and so Mon Italy sort of searches for that, that sweet spot between finding a garment that is timeless, it's classic, you'll love it one day, maybe put it in the back of your closet for a while, and then you come back to it. It'll never grow old, but it, it fits you in a way that you might not get by just thrifting something. And the quality is obviously superb. Another interesting thing about Mon Italy is that they really upcycle a lot of goods too. Matt from Visvim Trading Post shared some of his Monolith collection and he showed off a uh, jacket 
that was actually made from old army tents that were unused from World War II maybe. And I really love that because it's just a great way of upcycling old, well-made material. Thirdly, I'd like to talk about Epperson Mountaineering because the fourth is actually something I'll be able to show off. But with Epperson Mountaineering, that's founded by Mark Epperson and it's all inspired by 70s and 80s hiking bags, outdoor bags, tote bags. Um, and it's just another pursuit of recreating a vintage item in the best way possible. And he uses the best materials possible. Lastly, we get to Yucatan, which is really what brought me to stumble across this brand. So Yucatan is moccasin constructed footwear and it's all made in Maine um, by artisanal moccasin makers. So think along the lines of like L.L. Bean, uh, classic New England sort of ivy style boot, but I would say with a, a twist to it. There's also a lot of Native American influence in the concho silverware that you get on it, on certain products such as the mules and also moccasins obviously are Native American originating, but it's completely done in Maine. Everything uses Horween leather, which is amazing. Um, it's one of the oldest and most respected tanneries in North America and the entire world. Another company that uses that that is an apt comparison to Yucatan's boot quality would be Visvim. Yucatan's only use Vibram or Cortina outsoles. Something that I love about Yucatan is that they have products that are made to order or extremely limited, not in the sort of sense that they get hyped and sell out, but if you really love a moccasin, you can get it with a bandana patchwork stitched into it, or even they have cheetah print or leopard print. And if you get it made to order, you can even request certain lace colors, or maybe they you know, they change the stitching to another color. That stuff is all customizable if you choose to order it. The sizing also comes automatically with width, I believe. Um, my personal size in it is an 11E. I typically wear 11 and a half in men's sneakers. And that leads to my review of the Yucatan Angler boot. So I purchased these boots I'd say back in January maybe, and I've really taken them through the ringer. As you can see, there's certainly quite a few scratches forming on the leather itself. I've left these completely untreated. Um, I really just want to wear them in and have every scratch, uh, you know, blemish sort of characterize the boots, show where I've been. They use a Horween upper, as I mentioned before, and the bottom is a Cortina lug sole, which is very uncommon. The Cortina lug sole is actually inspired by the 1956 Winter Olympics, which were held in the Cortina district of Italy. The shoelaces use a cowhide leather. When I wear these, I usually do a lace around the back and then I tie it in the front because the laces are so long. The sole features a Goodyear welt all the way around it, which is sort of the exact same construction process that you find on many Visvim boots um, between the Horween leather, Goodyear welt. It's also just a common practice for really well-made boots. I would say that, you know, the inside is also completely leather, the insole is leather, and it really starts to wear into your foot the more you wear it. I actually bought these to wear with my Capital Century denim. I, I really wanted a pair of shoes that I could just beat up, let indigo dye get all over them. And you can see on some of the laces and even the sides of the leather that they've been stained definitely by some indigo, but I think it just adds to the character on these boots. Um, when you purchase it, you get box, and in the box, there's a little product tag that sort of just tells you about the leathers. They're not treated. And then with that, you also get a nice dust bag that even has the Yucatan logo embossed in it. 
Being from the Northeast, I really just love these boots for the sort of nostalgia that it gives me. I always grew up wearing bean boots and I feel like these are just sort of a, uh, a step up from that in terms of quality. I think that they sort of model the Visum Grizzly more than anything in terms of like with the lug sole and this sort of high top leather build. Um, and durability wise, I'd say they're, they have to be similar, although I've never handled the Grizzly in person. Obviously the Grizzly also has Riri zips on the side of it, these don't. I would say there wasn't much of a break in process at all when I bought these. I just sort of wore them and I've been actively trying to wear them as much as possible until summer comes because I want them to be truly broken in. And I would say at this point, they're probably my most comfortable pair of shoes, which is crazy considering that they're high top leather boots. In the future, I'd really love to pick up a pair of the low top moccasins. I'm a really big fan of the patchwork ones that they do. Not necessarily the bandana, but I've seen them mix suede and leather together and these sort of really unique patterns. And they've also done a um, olive green patchwork pattern, I believe, that I really liked. Um, I just think the quality on these is amazing and it comes at a much more affordable price point than something like Visvim. In terms of pricing, these are still really expensive, but I also see great used options on Grail and eBay and they are resolable, so you can take them, get new soles on them. They really have sort of an infinite lifetime as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure you can wear these for decades. So it's important to note that the Yucatans are handmade in Maine, as I said before, but what a good year well indicates that's often confusing is that it's welted by a Goodyear machine. And so the sole, the outsole is done by the machine, but then the rest of the stitching you see is what's really done by the artisans in Maine that have so much experience making these. This is where they originated originally as Maine. This is actually based on the boot worn by fishermen in Maine in the 60s. And the stitching that you get all around the toe up the sides is all done in a beeswax coated thread by hand. And there are even videos on their website of different moccasins being made. Overall, I would say that despite them being so expensive, we really have fallen in love with the brand and I would love to pick up more pieces from the different brands in the Megco family. And it's really amazing to support a smaller business in the fashion world like Yucatan and Megco. I think that um, it's really important to discuss brands like these on YouTube because often you come across people focusing on just the largest brand names, the most popular, most hyped up, and there's absolutely a place for that. But these smaller brands really offered, I would say, after handling them in person, I'd say about equal craftsmanship, if not better. There's a, a real relation to what you're wearing, and that's what's most important to me at the end of the day. It's not the name on the, on the label. It'd really mean a lot if you liked the video, if you subscribed. I had a couple people ask me about this, so I figured it would be best to make a video and break it down since there's not a real sort of dichotomy of Megco on the internet and in video format at least. And I figured why not be the first to have a crack at it. As always, let me know if I missed anything. These videos are really stepping out of my comfort zone, so any feedback is appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.